So let's make that light flash now. And now this is the circuit I had in the previous video. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is disconnect the power. Now, there's only one change to make, actually. It's a very simple one. Instead of connecting the anode permanently to the power, I'm going to attach it to a pin on this microcontroller. Now, the pins on this microcontroller are very fine pitch, which is why we're using one of these prototyping boards, or one of the reasons. But many of them are brought out on these external connectors, and they're labelled. So the so-called Arduino connector is this strip here and this strip here, the thin uh, female polarity uh, sockets. Um, well, we're going to use these uh, because they're nicely labelled. And there's one here, the, the top of this group here, there's a little break there if you look. Right, the top one is labelled D7. So if I'm going to put that in there, now I've already programmed my microcontroller. I'm going to show you that step next. But I just want to show you what we're trying to achieve. So now, instead of connecting the anode to the power, as shown in the schematic in the notes, I've now connected it to this pin on the microcontroller. So in software, we're going to make that pin go to 3.3 volts for 0.2 of a second, and then turn off for a second and then repeat the whole process infinitely. Okay, so if I power it up, it'll take a short time for the software to, uh, to run, but once it runs, it runs at full speed. So we just wait, and in the end, what you should see is a blinking LED, and there you go. So it's on for 0.2 of a second, and then off, repeat. Okay, so that's going to 3.3 volts, and then to zero, to 3.3 volts, and then to zero. Um, now that's a bit too quick to see with the meter. We could slow it down and have a look at that. But um, first, let's actually look at the software and see how that works. So to begin with, we're going to be writing code using an online tool. And uh, I'm going to show you how to use that now. So open the Chrome browser and go to embed.org. And then you want to go to develop a site. Now, I've already got an account, so when I click login or sign up, I'm going to choose login, right? Because I've got an account already. If you haven't got an account, I suggest you create one by clicking sign up and following the instructions. Okay, once you have an account, you need to log in. And you'll get this page. Now we want to go straight to the, uh, the development environment, so that's this tab here, Compiler. Okay, and when that loads, you'll see something a little bit like this. I've got three existing projects that I've been experimenting with here already, uh, and you won't, of course. But um, it's very straightforward to create a new project. And we'll, we also need to bear in mind we're creating a new project for the Nucleo 401 board. So let's go through that. So first of all, let's add support for the Nucleo board. So on the top right hand corner, I've got a little icon here. That's the current platform I'm using. Um, so if I click new, new program, I can choose from the platforms that I've used before. Now, I want to add a platform. So I'm going to click the button in the top right, and I'm going to choose Add Platform. That takes me to the uh, embed site which lists all the supported boards, as you can see there are quite a lot of them. Um, now on the right hand side we can narrow down the list a little bit because there are a lot. So I'm going to choose this one here that says Target Vendor ST Microelectronics. And it's this one here, the Nucleo F401RE. So select that. Okay. Now, this tells you about that board, but on the right here, you don't need to click Buy Now, because obviously we've provided one of these. Click Add to your Embed Compiler. This is a one-off task, I should add. Once it's done, that's it. Okay, and that's done. So I'm going to close this tab. I don't need it. And now when I create a new project, 
one of the options is the Nucleo F401. Okay, template, well there are some example programs, quite a few in fact, but as it happens, of course, the first one is Blinky, the, uh, the first application everyone tends to write for the embedded world. Now there are a couple Blinkies, actually, there's the regular Blinky and the um, how to blink an LED using a ticker object, we will look at both, but take the top one, Blinky LED test for the S2 nuclear boards. Program name, well, call it what you want. I'm going to use the default and click OK. What is this doing? Well, this is creating us what's called a project. A project is a collection of files, some of which you edit and some of which you don't. And essentially, we see two things here in this area here, this navigator. Under Nucleo Blink LED, I've got main.cpp and I've got embed. Embed actually represents all the code provided for you. You don't have to look at that at the moment. Um, that's just libraries of, of code that you can call on. So if we click main.cpp, we in fact see an example program that flashes the light on and off. Now I'm going to make a couple changes. So if you remember from the video, uh, we're going to be using the pin that was labeled D7. And all you've got to do, so for this digital out, all right, so this is an object it is a digital output. We can set it high or low. Uh, given it the name My LED, and we've passed in what pin to use. So I'm going to make that D7. So that's the first thing we need to change. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change these numbers here. So we've got My LED equals one. That turns it on. It waits for 0.2 of a second, and then it turns it off and it waits for one second. Let's balance that out. Let's make that one second and one second, like that. Okay. So we turn the LED on, we wait, we turn it off, we wait, and then everything just gets repeated. So while one, which means while forever, do what is between these curly brackets, and we're going to cover that. So save. Okay, now click Compile. What is this doing? This is converting our program into a, uh, a file that can be run on the nuclear board. And this is what it's doing now. It wants you to download it. I'm going to put it on my desktop. It's called Nucleo Blink LED Nucleo F401 dot bin. Okay, don't worry too much about that, but make a note of where it goes. So there it is. So we can't read that with our eyes, that, that's binary data, we, we don't, that's something for the computer. So how do we get it onto the nuclear board? Well, that's really easy with embed. You plug in the USB connector, you probably hear a sound if you've got speakers, and this may pop up. If not, you'll see the, uh, the sort of highlighter down here. Click on that. And we can browse our nuclear board a little bit like a flash memory stick. Okay, um, we'll come back to this, but for now we want to program it. So let's just drag our code onto there. And that will do it. Now if we switch back to the camera now and have a look at the Nucleo board, we'll see what effect that's actually had. Now we see the LED flashing on for one second and off for a second. If we slow this down even further, we could observe this with the voltmeter as well. So let's do that. I'm going to slow this right down. So I'm going to put this on uh, five seconds for on and then five seconds off. Save. Now before I download, I'm going to delete the old one. Press compile. Save it on the desktop. There it is. Drag my file in. Okay. So let's go and have a look at the actual board now. This is the board with the new software running. So again, if we probe the voltage across the LED, you see nothing, zero volts, 2.08 volts, back to zero again, and so forth. Now the voltage across the LED that you've got is very likely to be different.